Amish community. Did that have a ripple effect? I got to tell you, it had a ripple effect all across our country. And it didn't happen close to probably any of us. But guess where the ripple effect came in? Not from that heinous act, but it happened from something that uh, you need to hear. The grandfather of one of those little girls murdered by Charles Roberts said the following. I got to read it because I don't want to miss a line. Guess what he said? We must not think evil of this man. He had a mother, he had a wife, and he's standing before a just God. Now, if it was your child, your grandchild, or somebody near <coughs> and dear to you, do you think that's what you'd be saying? People's response to the Amish response is what got it done. But if Paul Harvey were here, guess what he would say? Wait till you hear the rest of the story. Remember that? <laughs> You may not recall this, but that same Amish community, mourning for the loss of their young daughters, said there's somebody else we need to worry about. Charles Roberts' widow is suffering too. Would you agree? So they got in a horse and buggy and traveled miles, you ready for this? To comfort the widow of the man who killed their daughters. Another quote. I don't think there's anyone here who wants to do anything but forgive. Did you hear that word? And not only reach out to those who have suffered a loss of our children, but to reach out to the family of the man who committed these acts. <clears throat> wow. That's pretty powerful. Would you agree? You know what? It has a great ripple effect. Forgiveness. You and I go around and we get our nose out of joint because somebody did us wrong. Guess what the truth of it is? We need to lighten up. We need to forgive. I bet you're like me. There's probably somebody in your world right now that you hold some ill feelings for. You need to let it go. You say, well, I'm going to wait for them to come apologize. Folks, you're not going to do it. You've got to give it up. I had a pastor say this with words I decided to live by. He said, if you don't forgive, it's the same as setting yourself on fire and hoping to smoke bother somebody. <laughs> Too many of us are what? Setting ourselves on fire, hoping it affects somebody. We've got to lighten up. I got one more. I don't know about this hat here. <coughs> Obviously a woman's hat with a little hair net on. Anybody remember those hats? This, I'll say, is my mother's hat. Why would I be putting that hat out there? Well, guess what happened to me? For years, I ran a business in Pennsylvania where I, I ran a real estate school. I had about 30 locations around western Pennsylvania. So my world was driving around. I was going through a little midlife crisis. I had a little red sports car, and I loved the gunning. And I was zip and zagging here, delivering materials, coordinating, sites and locations and instructors and I got a speeding ticket in a little podunk town. How many have ever got a ticket that was just unfair? I mean going 80 miles an hour in a 35 mile zone, give me a little break. <laughs> well now I get one ticket, within 62 days I got three speeding tickets. You'd think I'd learned after the first one or the second, but I got three. I got a little letter from uh, the state of Pennsylvania. Department of Motor Vehicles, guess what it said? Dear Mr. Hamilton, for every violation, you had three, you get two points on your driving record. That's six. Anything over five means you lose your license for 30 days. I was about to lose my license for 30 days. My life, my business required me to be on the move. I thought, oh my God, what am I gonna do? To have my wife drive me around would not be a pleasant experience. <clears throat> But there was an asterisk, and guess what it said? If you take your driving test again, you could get rid of one point, bring you down to five, and you wouldn't lose your license. Guess what I'm thinking? What a teenager would say, duh, I'm gonna take my test again. And I had 30 days to do it. Well, I never slowed down. I just kept on this rat race. And I put it off, I put it off, and I remember I was doing a board luncheon, a real estate board luncheon. After that board luncheon, I'm on my way home, strange part of the state, barely there, and I thought, 
wonder how much time I have to get my driver's test done. So I opened the glove box, pulled out that, that sheet, and found out today was the last of the 30 days. Every once in a while, the Lord treats you better than you deserve. <coughs> Folks, you think I'm kidding you, but I'm telling you the honest to God truth. As I came around the bend at that moment, guess what the sign said? Driver Testing Center. I thought, this is a good omen. Mm. So I drove in. Mm, hot August day. Nobody in the lot except the employee parking. I went in, gave my sheet to a lady. She looked at me with disgust. Like, you lead foot. We got you where we want you. I said, ma'am, as you can see, I need to take my test. She said, been driving kind of fast, were you? I said, yes, ma'am. I says, uh, so come on, let's go take the test. She says, oh, you misunderstand. This isn't a physical driving test. This is a written test. I says, oh, okay. I said, uh, give me the test. She says, well, I'd like to, but I got a problem. Our printer is broken. So I have to give you the test orally. I thought, oh my goodness. I said, how many questions are there? She said, 20. I said, how many can I miss? She said, six. I said, then I gotta get 14 right. She says, that's it. I said, let's do it. So she started asking the questions. <clears throat> I was struggling mightily. Do you remember what was on your driver's test? I don't. And I would give an answer and then I'd stare at her, <laughs> hoping she'd give me some visual cue as to whether I got it right. But this lady, I'm pretty sure, sucked lemons for a living. <laughs> there was no reaction at all. And I'm going through question after question. I get all done with 20. I said, ma'am, how did I do? Guess what she said? 14. I said, really? I got 14 right? She says, no. You got 14 wrong. <laughs> no. Now I'm really in trouble. Now I am going to lose my license. What she said next just blew me away. I thought it was so unusual. You know what she said? She looked at my card. She says, Hamilton, Hamilton, what's your mother's name? I thought, where's that coming from? I said, my mother's <coughs> name was Frances. She said, what did she do? I said, well, she was an elementary school teacher. She says, where? I said, ma'am, in a little coal patch town called Muse, Pennsylvania, over next to the West Virginia border. She said, your mother was my teacher. I thought, where is this coming from? I said, really? She said, describe her room. I said, she had a double room. She had the library. And back. She says, yeah, your mother was my teacher. And I again, I didn't know how to respond. She says, you don't know this, but when I was in sixth grade, the highest grade in that elementary school, I wasn't going very well. Matter of fact, I was failing sixth grade. And all my friends next year were going on to the junior high school, and I was going to be left behind. I thought my world had ended. The humiliation was tremendous. But she said, your mother spent extra time before school, recess, lunch break, after school, tutoring, coaching, encouraging, and retesting. And through her efforts, I passed. She said, my only regret was I was too young, too immature to thank her. I didn't even know how until today. <clears throat> she picked up a stamp that said pass, put it on my form, told me to get out of there and slow down. How many think that's a ripple effect? Do you think my mother back then said, well, I better take care of this little girl? Because somewhere in the future, my son, that little is going to need somebody to bail him out. How many think that wasn't even on our radar screen? What I'm telling you, folks, is the little things you do every day and the people around you has a what? Has a ripple effect. I got, I got one more. One more. This one's a little bit special. It's not so much a hat as it is a crown, a crown of thorns. And you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jesus of Nazareth. Those of you worried that I'm going to lapse into a sermon or some religious message, nothing could be further than the truth. I simply want to talk about Jesus as a man. You know who he was? He, he never owned a home. He never wrote a book. Never held an office. Never went to college. Never never had a family. 
He never traveled more than what? 100, 150 miles from home. <clears throat> but as one author put it so well, guess what he said? Of all the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, and all the kings that ever reigned, had not affected man on earth as much as this what? One solitary life. I think that's what you call a ripple effect. As you leave here, I want you to be aware of something. We all have a ripple effect. All I ask you to do is do not waste it. Thank you very much for coming today. That was good. Very good. Guys, don't forget your survey monkey. Um, I did check downstairs uh, with the office and the front desk. And tomorrow, the actual checkout time is...